I have followed Jacob Epstein's work throughout my career. It feels really special to be showing here in the museum that has such a big collection of his work and is looking after his legacy. Jeffrey Island, the photographer, spent a lot of time with uh, Jacob Epstein in the studio photographing him. And the New Art Gallery Warsaw have a very big collection of these black and white photographs. Some of them are of Epstein working in the studio, but some of them are of Epstein's collection. I was very taken back by the photographs of the African masks. I think there's a very good relationship between the photographs by Jeffrey Island and my sculpture from 2006. The New Art Gallery also has a collection of Epstein's Greek and Roman artifacts. I set them up in the main hall with my uh, clay sculptures, which I worked with dancers. And there's a great world that develops and the relationships between them, which I'm very interested in. Jacob Epstein came from a tradition of direct carving. So it meant that he would find a stone and he would start working it, kind of believing that the work is in the material. I work in a very similar way. So about 10 years ago, I saw Jacob Epstein's Jacob and the Angel, which is a big alabaster sculpture of two figures. And I read somewhere that he sourced the material in a place called Seraveza which is in Tuscany. I ended up acquiring broken copies of Greek and Roman sculptures and reworking them to make them my own. That was the beginning of me carving stone and marble. I never studied it, it was just trying to make my mark on the material. I chose the particular marble because it has very human-like features then we put them on the same basis as the Epstein sculptures to kind of bring them into the gallery. The rock formations came from me looking at Greek sculpture and trying to remake moments within this sculpture that we, you could have the memory of what it was like, but you could see it for what it is today. So I went in Italy, in Petra Santa, and acquired stones that came off the quarry maybe 60 or 100 years ago, so they aged. And the stones had shapes of torsos. And there's a sense of stillness to the work. But again, because the rocks have been out for so long, there is a sense of aging as well and movement. Mannequins came because if you think about Greek sculpture, it's very much like mannequins. They were painted, they were about the ideal body, and a lot of the postures which modern day mannequins have are postures that Greek sculpture has. By that I kind of bridged the gap of 2000 years and started working with source material which was the mannequins which was more of our time, so from the 70s, 80s and 90s. And these mannequins are, are, are specific, they made by a company called Adele Ruchtin, Adele Ruchtin chose real people. She'd invite them to the studios. They would be sculpted by a sculptor and made into mannequins. The New Art Gallery also has a big window box looking to the city center. I chose a sculpture of a mannequin couple standing outside looking at the city landscape. I chose Liv and Marcel, who he's without any arms and she's embracing him. They're kind of looking at each other, but totally fit into the cityscape of Warsaw. I started working with dancers in the studio, making clay works where the dancers would pose for me, making the fabric cutouts, cutting the silhouette of the dancers. And I wanted to make a body of work of mannequins, which are all to do with dance and movement. There are nine of them, and each one is dancing. We don't know if it's to the beginning of the world or to the end. I'd like visitors to bring themselves to here, so I kind of would like to see it as a place for reflection, a 
a place that you could walk through these different spaces that have different stories happening but allow you the space to try and figure out who we are, what we are, where we're going.